Hi everyone. I asked our recent hackathon winner Pascalis if he would reveal how he built his incredible ISXM project. And he was kind enough to share his full process with us. For those who missed it, Revel and I hosted an NVIDIA ISXM hackathon focused on a pick and place task using Revel assets, including a huge prize pool. In this breakdown, he shows us how to use custom built extensions, create a physically accurate claw with joints and joint drives, how to model ropes, and design the full scene, including those beautiful cinematic camera movements. I've also added some extra notes throughout the video. Please let me know if you find them useful. You can jump directly to the sections with a timestamp. For my tournament contribution, I tried to build a physically accurate claw machine in NVIDIA Isaac Sim, and this is how I did it. First, I wanted to make sure the claw movement actually worked. So I started with a rough prototype made out of cubes. I was pretty surprised it worked so well. Once I saw that the claw mechanics could actually be simulated in Isaac Sim, I modeled a more realistic claw in Fusion 360, imported it back, and set it up with rigid bodies and joints. Here's how a claw works. There's a shaft in the middle that gets pulled up by a solenoid. The fingers are attached to the shaft, and when it moves up, the claw closes. So the voltage of the solenoid controls how strong it grips. So the claw can close, but if the voltage is too low, heavy objects just slip out. That's why in real arcade machines you sometimes feel like the claw could grab the object, but it just doesn't hold. I simulated this behavior with the stiffness of the joint drive. Okay, so that's the claw. Next, the rope. I tested a few approaches for the rope. My first approach was based on the point instance, which is really, really good on performance, but I couldn't manage to attach it to the prim based claw. So I used the same approach, but instead of using point instance, I went with prim based. For retracting the rope, at first I thought about dragging it through a small hole like a torus, but then I switched to a winch based system and that worked way better. The rope curls around the winch and it retracts smoothly. Then I combined claw and rope and winch together and to control them I thought about using a physically accurate joystick and a button. So the joystick has joints and restoring forces so it snaps back upright when you let go. So like in a real claw machine, you would use the joystick to drive above the um, toy or object you would like to grab, and then you hit the button. And once you hit the button, the claw will descend, close, hopefully grab an object, and then ascend again, move back to the home position, and open the claw and let the object fall. Finally, I combined everything and added some of the rebel assets into the machine, so it actually feels like a real arcade. And yeah, one of the hardest parts was actually capturing the claw, grabbing something successfully. It's not easy, but not impossible either. And in this clip, it finally happened. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my claw machine. Um, huge thanks to Lee AI, Revel and NVIDIA for running such a fun event. Um, I wish I had more time to bring all my ideas to life, but there's always next time. Hello everyone. Hi Li Chi. Thanks for having me. My name is Pascal Estrencios. I am a mechanical engineer by training. I'm really interested in how machines work and the physical principles behind that. Grew up playing video games, so also very interested in simulated worlds. During my PhD, I also focus on machine learning, especially deep reinforcement learning and how to bring this into engineering. Yeah, and during my day job at Accenture, I basically bring everything that I just mentioned to our clients. So robotics, AI, digital twins and generating a real value for them. But this is also what I do for fun, so that's why I contributed to this hackathon with my physically accurate claw machine and I will show you now how I did it. So let's jump right into Omniverse. Okay, so we are here inside Isaac Sim, inside Omniverse. What we can see here on the left is the machine and the viewport. I move around a little bit so you can see the claw, the rope, the winch system and the joystick also the button hand the revel assets and the whole machine you know the part where you hopefully drop your prizes to grab them out of there and here we have the stage view please keep in mind this was an hackathon so everything is a bit chaotic i didn't clean it really up um, you have the individual components here i will get to that in in a bit and what we have here on the right side is my custom UI extension that I made. This uh, helped me also to build some of the components, for example, the rope, but also um, helped me debug and control um, everything. So for example, uh, we have a joystick controller here, but also a controller for the winch and the claw. And the same also for the camera control, but I will cover all of those functions later. 
Okay, I think we can start and have a look at the claw. So I made the viewport a bit larger so that you can see everything a bit better. Let's select the claw and focus on it. I will go a bit closer. And what you can see here is the claw that I modeled in Fusion 360. Started off with um, cubes and tested just the, you know, the basic function of the claw. And once I was sure that it can be simulated in Isaac Sim, I remodeled everything and rigged it. So maybe you can have a look at the individual components. So every component is um, its own rigid body. You know, the links here that attach to the fingers and the fingers then attach to the shaft. And all of those individual rigid bodies have also joints. I can actually activate the joint debug view so that you can see it here. So we have a lot of joints here in, at the claw. Um, basically at every intersection um, we have one. And when I created this in Fusion 360, I made sure that the pivot of every object that I created is actually inside um, the, the part where also the link uh, would attach uh, to, uh, sorry, I mean the joint would attach to. So this made it really helpful or really easy to just create the joints. I didn't have to move them around anymore. Yeah, and all the Revolut joints that are here used in, in the claw are rotating freely, so they have no restriction. And the only driven um, joint is this prismatic joint for the shaft that can move up and down. And this is also how it would be in a real claw machine. So you have a solenoid right here, and when you attach a, sol um, a voltage to it, it will you know, pull the shaft upwards. And this, um, I can actually show you how this works. So let's activate physics. Um, we can switch to properties so that you can actually see the um, joint component. So this is the joint here. You have uh, lower limits and upper limits and it drives um, in the Z axis. And now I can also show you how I used my UI controller script. So in this part here, claw control, I select basically the um, joint path um, to, to this joint, which is um, yeah, basically this one here. And I can set a target linear position and also set the drive stiffness and uh, increments by which it goes to, uh, towards the target linear position. So if I click claws claw now, you will see that here in the target position, it will change this value and the claw clauses. What the UI extension also allows me to do is change the drive stiffness of the joint drive. So the drive stiffness is basically the force with which the target position is reached. In that sense, it is controlling the grip strength of the claw. So right now we have a thousand. So the, we open the claw again and close it. It will close with a, a really high strength and can actually grab the rebel assets and hold them very tight. But if I reduce this value, let's say to 50 and close the claw right now, you can see it moves a bit slower. It doesn't have so much force to actually close all the way. So it's a bit um, open here. But as a player, you still get the sense, oh, okay, yeah, my, my claw can close. So, um, but what it would do right now, if you grab an object, it would just let it fall. So the object would just slip through. And the same thing happens with a real claw machine in reality. So there, they would just apply a low voltage, which means that the solenoid doesn't have enough force. So it will close the claw, but the weight of the object would just pull the shaft downwards because the solenoid doesn't have enough force to, to hold it up. And by that, the fingers will open and the claw will just drop your object. So we could do the same logic here in simulation by just you know randomly putting a high or low um, drive stiffness value in there, but we don't do that. So we always apply a high one so that we can actually grab and hold the object. Okay, let's have a look at the rope. So for the rope, as you can see here, I used individual capsule objects that clip a bit into each other, but they don't have any self collision enabled, at least not the neighboring ones. And they are attached via spherical joints. So we have here all the individual capsules. So for this rope length here, we have 40 um, capsule objects and they are attached to each other via spherical joints, as you can see here, you can zoom in a bit. So yeah, you can, you can see it here, um, spherical joints. And if you look at the properties, um, they're not limited. So you can just rotate uh, freely around this axis. You can also apply um, 
physics right now and you can see it can just just move freely and here on my right side i have a rope configuration um, helper tool because i was a bit lazy i didn't want to you know do everything by hand um, so all the capsules and the joints are generated automatically i can show you that in a empty scene so here right now we are in an empty scene and if i click on create rope it will create me a rope with 20 capsules as you can see here so here's a rope just focus on it and click on play and the first one i think i have it in a way yeah so the first one um does not have um how do you say a ri rigid body um or it has a rigid body but it's kinematic so it's not um influenced by gravity so i can just move this one here real quick and you can see all the rope turns but i can also clear the rope and create a rope let's say with 50 objects right here so now we have a longer one can move it in the same way you can see here it jiggles around and yeah that's that's how i created the rope Okay, then let's also have a look at the cinematics, the look and feel. Maybe we can start with the arcade itself. So the arcade is actually built out of a lot of individual cube objects that are just rescaled in a way so that they resemble an arcade machine. And uh, then I applied different materials to those. So especially for, for the glass, I used um, glass material and I really like this reflections in, in the windows of the um, arcade because even if you look like from a different angle you still always have some what most of the assets in view through the reflection same goes for for the claw you know and what i also like is how the light source i use in rectangle light is um, reflected in in the in the windows i also have a light in here which you can't see but this eliminates um basically this area where you can drop your prices. Yeah, so that's about the materials. Then let's also have a look at the cinematics, so the camera movement. For the cinematics, there are multiple ways to move the camera around. One is obviously just using mouse and keyboard inputs like so. So now I'm moving it with the mouse and now I'm moving with the keyboard inputs, as you can see. But this is not very smooth and also not very repeatable. Another way that I found out was to use this extension. It's called Animation Path. And what it does is it allows you to define a curve or a path and then to move an object um, on, on this path. So this is actually this push graph right here. This uses the motion path. And what I have here is um, I defined a lot of curves that I can quickly also blend in so that you can have a look. And those curves here, this one goes also through the arcade. So this is the camera path as you, as you would like. So here's one, here's another one, very complex one, and here's a very simple one. I'm not sure which one I ex um, exactly used, but one of those to do the camera movement. And I used this extension right here to also, while doing the camera movement, to look at one object. Um, so have the camera always point to that object. Um, yeah, the extension is enabled, so if I hit play, I think we will see some camera movement. Yeah, so you can see here, I'm not moving my mouse, I'm not using keyboard inputs, it's just moving the camera along one of the defined curves. And we have a very smooth movement, it gets a bit quicker at some points, slows down. And while doing so, we also look at a specific object. Yeah, so that's how I did the cinematics. And while doing that, I just put Omniverse in, in full screen and recorded it. Yeah, so that pretty much covers everything. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks, Lichi, for having me again. And see you next time. If you have found this video helpful and want to see more, make sure to subscribe and like the video. Also, a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. Your support really means a lot.